happening? Welcome to On The One. Today is a special episode because we're gonna take a look at a tune of mine off a new collaborative album with Dave Kaz, the Sultan of Smooth, the Stamos of Sax, the Somalier of Soundwaves himself. Now, this is a tune called Today. It was the first single that we put out uh, for this album. And this episode is brought to you by none other than DistroKid. Now you may have heard me spewing about DistroKid before because I like the company, I like the people, and I like the service they provide. For those of you not familiar, DistroKid is a digital distributor. They'll put your music on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, everybody else, Tidal, you know. I guess, wait, in Serbia, they're in the Deezer now, aren't they? They're in the Deezer, yeah. That's the thing. What's up with Deezer in Serbia? I've, I've lived in the States for the last 10 years and more. Don't, don't you know. have people? You must have people. I, I don't know. I Every time I... Th Actually, you know what's funny? Every time you release a record, it's like a month or two months later on Deezer. It's like a month or two months behind. Oh, really? Yeah. I did do talk to my friends over there. Hey, Striped Album's out. Nice. No, it ain't. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Hey. I listen on, on the platforms I listen on, different countries, different people, they listen on different things. Different I don't countries? Have, yeah, different, like in Serbia, they, oh, yeah, they yeah, listen yeah, yeah. to Deezer, you know, and I have a lot more action on Apple Music in, Spotify? in, in Japan. In Japan. Whoa. In Japan? So, well, here's the thing, is that if I were to just look at my Spotify statistics, I would think I'm not, I don't have much of a following in Japan. If I only looked at my Apple statistics, I would think... Japan is my biggest market in the world. Well, but that's why um, you just got to be on all of them. So, and DistroKid can do that for zero percent. That's right, zero percent. Who are these clowns with me? <laughs> <laughs> these are my friends, Krusty this, <laughs> and Saito <Saint -Germain. laughs> This, this is Petar Janic, Yo. as uh, who's been living in the United States for ten years now. <laughs> and this is Michael Nelson. Actually longer than that, but let's see. Uh, Michael is the horn <laughs> arranger and trombone player and arranged the horns for this album. I produced this album. Uh, Michael and I have worked on a lot of stuff. Now this particular album for me is one that I, I, okay, so I love doing my own albums. Don't get me wrong. But what's kind of fun, more than kind of fun, very fun, is doing an album with another artist because what ends up happening is that artist might draw me to the edges of my artistry on one way and I'll draw that artist to the edges of their artistry on theirs, but it still fits. It's just, it's kind of like where did, where in Corey Wong land and Dave Cos land, where does the Venn diagram overlap and how do we, some songs are more on my side, some are more on his, but you kind of learn to uh, adapt and, and just like uh, take in each other's artistry. So I loved doing this album because we got to do it as something where uh, it's both of our albums. And actually, speaking of that and DistroKid, I'm gonna show you that later on how Dave and I get paid off of this album and how DistroKid handles that for us so we don't have to think about it. Anyways. We'll get there later. Um, the song is Today. I'm gonna play the demo that Dave and I made right here in this room. Dave came to town and we wrote for three, four days, something like that. And I think we ended up writing the whole album in those few days. Aside from a couple, a couple songs that were already um, around, that, that we already had in the bag. So. This is one of those. It's a uh, demo form. Check it out. I just programmed some drums. I played a pass through on bass and guitar. And, you know, whatever. Classic Corey Wong Dry 70s disc we get.
cat still just... He's still got to get it in. Kaz is still getting it in. That's the thing. Dave just sounds like Dave all the time. <laughs> he just sounds like that all the time. That's amazing. Yeah, he's gonna... And actually, I loved his demo solo so much. I said, you you just gotta like basically recreate the solo at the session. I said, all right, fine. I'm gonna do some different embellishments here and there. Great. The song actually started from... I think he'd kill me if I actually played you what he sent me. Let me see if I still have Please it. Please play it. <laughs> Let me check. Yes, Dave's a part of the family now. He's a part of the process of this band, of this crew. So what I think... The good what, and the bad. And, <laughs> and what we do on this show, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's we call each other on our own little shenanigans. So I think it would be justifying... Where is the... Whatever Dave sent you, just play it, bro. <laughs> All right. I love it. I'm scrolling through my texts with Dave. So, so he sometimes puts... A, <laughs> Dave's got these. Here, can you see this? This is like such a smooth jazz photo. It's like, I'm thinking about things. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but he's got these photos that look so serious. I think, Dave, what is going on here? I feel like I did something wrong when I see this picture. Like, like you're mad at me or something. <laughs> Anyways. Well, here, here's the deal. I don't have it. I think Dave deleted it from our text messages because he knows that I would probably show it to people. <laughs> Like I was gonna do right there, but anyways, it's him in his. In his he goes, do 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 do, do 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 do, do 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 do, do 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 do. Yeah, I, I really like that melody. And then he'd send me that, right? <laughs> like, you know, that's something I would do. <laughs> uh, it's so simple. And there's like so almost nothing there, but I think he knew. He knew in his mind, this is catchy, and with the right thing around it, this will be a banger. It's yeah. one of my so, favorite on the record. Yeah, this is my favorite song on the album. This is my favorite song. It's just a great album. seed. Yeah, to... it's a yeah. It was a great seed. Yeah. All right, how do we develop this? Where do we go with it? And we hashed out. I think we ended up writing it in 35, 40 minutes or something. I actually originally I was playing something like. Um, I was going boot da do do I was going more of that uh do 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 Yeah the do 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 song yeah What is it? Wild side wild side yeah 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 so I was going more of that but Do, 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 do. <laughs> Stupid. But then he goes, he just said, no, 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 no. Give me the John Mayer voicings. I was like, wait, which, what do you mean? Okay, because I know a lot of John's music very intimately. So I was thinking, what songs would there be where he would consider there a John Mayer voicing? And it was the one that the... I'm gonna do a little different so I don't get copyright involvement, but it's the one that it has this chord at the beginning of it. So I was thinking, oh, he wants that chord, the major nine, that guitar major nine voice. So I went. That voice. So it was the. And then all of a sudden, D Dave said it was the greatest thing ever. Okay, that was easy. Great. But I had to kind of interpret what he meant by that. And then I, I came to that conclusion. But I think he was totally right. He didn't know how exactly to articulate to me what it was, but he articulated just enough for me to <clears throat> get it, to know. So that is kind of how this started. Now let's dive into the Pro Tools session from the actual recording. All right, so I got the Pro Tools session open. Check this out. So we recorded this all live in the room. <clears throat> you know what, I'll, here's, a, here's a little video of our session. We 
had the drums, then we have bass guitar, we have guitar DI, running through the Archetype Cory Wong plugin. That's right, Neural DSP. There's a link below if you want to check out Swing this. Swing and a miss. <laughs> what do you mean, Swing? Yo, I got a plugin. I'm very proud of it. I use it on every recording that I do. I am telling and all my friends about your plugin. It's dope. That's I even use it on my drums. That's right. Bass, drums, put it on it all. Double bill euphonium? Why not? <laughs> we got the B3. We have a brass bus, which is trumpet, trumpet, trombone. A winds bus, which is flute, bass, clarinet. And then there's a, a Barry sax. There's a third, there's another mic, because sometimes he switches off between uh, Barry sax and bass clarinet. And then there's, the, so the winds and the brass bus each go into an all horns bus, a section bus. And then there's two mics on Kaz. You will have seen it in that video. There's, we used, um, 421? A 421 and a Soyuz something. But it was cool. I, I used mostly the Soyuz, but I also like the 421 because it's it's a little more direct attack. Um, now, what you're gonna hear on this session is not the final mix. This was just my producer's mix and John Fields mixed it in the end. Now, I will be careful with how I say this. No, I don't need to be careful. I'll tell you exactly how I feel. Here he comes with another, he's coming with another some kind of monster reference. Every time. <laughs> You're just setting him up. No, I mean, well, yeah, our whole life could be set up if you, if you want it there to be some kind of monster references. Literally every moment of your life, you could sneak it in. Kind of We're going to move on. He's We're going to move it. on. He's working kind of on it. He's, yeah, he's, he's trying. He's trying, for sure. Okay. I don't need to choose my words wisely. I'm going to say exactly what I think. I <laughs> I like my producer's mix more than the final mixes that we had for the album. Dun, dun, dun. Now, now that doesn't that does not reflect bad on John Fields. That does not reflect bad on Cause for the decisions that he wanted to make as well. John is an incredible mixing engineer. I have my preferences for how I, I like things to sound. In a collaborative mm -hmm. album, I can't say that I want 100% final say in the mix, I need to let Dave, because Dave's made tons of albums. He knows what good mixes sound like. He knows what he wants. John is an incredible mixing engineer. He's gonna interpret our requests and feedback uh, and, and make it great. I think the mixes on the album are awesome. They're really great. I just didn't want as much. Mostly it has to do with the space. They. Dave was very particular. He wanted more reverb. They felt like that it should be... Look, you got this smirk on your face, like what? Nothing. Just a generational thing. I can see it fully what you're saying, because you're, you're this, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're this dry 70s, really like, like full on dry mix, like Earth, Wind, and yeah. Fire, like early. Yeah, and I like it just right here. Clean. It's literally just a preference thing. Honestly, I, I like when Dave's sax has verb on it because it does help give him part of his, it's part of his sound. It is. I'm saying in the rhythm section, I like things to be tighter up close. I was in the minority of that opinion. So I said, okay, fine. Like I've, I don't necessarily care, but I'm just saying this for anybody watching. It's, it's sometimes okay to have some disagreements and like, yeah, maybe I liked, I didn't want the drums to feel like they were recorded in a big room mm. live with each other. I would rather have it like, whoa, those were all in a big room recorded with each other. Yeah. I wanted it more like what you're gonna hear now. <laughs> <laughs> but also I'm not the greatest mixing engineer in the world. And and I've made mistakes too. I think on the very first, on the Corey and the Wong Notes season one, I think I should have put a little more space on my guitar. When I listen on headphones, I think I now I'm like I could have put a little little space on that. Uh, when I listen in a stereo in a room, it's fine. But sometimes when I'm listening up close, it is too. Whatever. Yeah. So here's here's what we got for the drums. Let's listen to the drums. And I'm I'm gonna play a little farther over so you can hear. We were all in the same room. 
Bleed, baby. There's blood all over this. <laughs> there is bleeding from mics to mics, and that's okay. It from gives mics it to mics. Nice. <laughs> this is literally just the drums soloed. Right? Okay, then we got the bass guitar here. Johannes. Johannes is funky, dude. This is it. Do, do, do. That's, that's the feel right there. Dude, Johannes is amazing. He is. I've known Johannes for years. We, Johannes was part of the Dr. Mambo's combo at Bunkers. Johannes was playing bass uh, for years with that band. Yeah, that's how we met him. And that's a, him. yeah, that's how we most of us. I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Okay. My guitar. Di. Is that the art of chords? Ooh. Default preset. Default preset CW. You want to know what that is? That is what I made before this plugin was even out. This was when it was in beta testing. My computer still has like the beta versions of some of my presets because they just turned those in. Like this is the default preset when you buy this plugin. When you buy this plugin. I said it. Not if. Yeah, not, not if. It's <laughs> when. All right, and we got the B3. That's sweet. That's that real joint. Yeah. Leslie's where, like in the downstairs basement. Well, Leslie was in the other room. Other room, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, that sounds so good. That sounds awesome. I think that's Ricky's. That's Ricky's organ? I think so. Or at least it's Leslie. It sounds amazing. Then, let's get to these horns, the <clears throat> horn section. <laughs> bleed! That's a lot of drum bleed. That's a lot of drum bleed. Bleed, baby. Bleed. To mute the drum. I mute muted. I muted the. Yeah. So I cut these up and I made it so where the horns weren't playing, in a lot of the places I just muted their mics <coughs> because there was so much extra stuff happening. And by extra stuff, I mean just the rest of the band playing in the room. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Strandana up top. That's tight. And we got cause. We got cause here. Let's, let's just get that nice little melody. <laughs> Sounds like Pitar was out of gas or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like running out of red battery. Light, green light, red light. Yeah. Green light. You're loading. And <laughs> now here's, uh, since I said I liked my mix better, I'm just going to play it for you. Then we're going to dive into some of the arrangement and the stuff. Just because now I feel like I made a whole thing out of it, which is okay. That's fine. But here's what I was. It's okay, buddy boy. Here was what I was hearing. I'll go from the top. It's right here. Dry.
Kyle's quote. <laughs> this this is the cause phrasing though. Listen to how he phrases this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> That's so smooth. That is so smooth. There's that. Yeah, that is. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, if this isn't playing in 5,000 elevators across the United States by the year 2024, I'm going to be pissed. Okay? If next time you go get Invisalign at your orthodontist, oh God. if they're not playing this album, that's on them. Okay. <laughs> Listen. Just don't go there. You go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. They have no. I call case. my boy. My boy listens to Kaz. The guy who did my Invisalign. He listens to Kaz. All right. All right. So let's let's dive into this arrangement. So song wise, the demo the demo had just Dave and myself and the drum beat, but. We needed to figure out how can we enhance this thing with a horn arrangement. Now, um, for those that may not have noticed through my entire catalog and the stuff that Michael and I do together, the majority of the things we do, we kind of think about two different types of horn sections, right? So, or two different treatments, I guess. And one treatment is full brass with saxophones. Um, that sort of treatment. And then the other treatment would be kind of woodwinds and flugels approach. Can you let us know how you normally approach the treatment of a song when you're presented with a demo like that? Why and when you choose certain instrumentations and how those treatments can be best applied to this sort of thing? Sure. Well, this, this song, I mean, it was kind of obvious, like you said, it, it already presents itself as a pretty laid back and like you don't want to hit hard yeah. with, with that with that sound. But it also, this one is, I mean, Kaz plays so, this kind of song, so um, vocally sweet, mm. you know, it, it, it's, yeah. it's just so expressive. Yeah. And so, you know, my thought on immediately is we're going to be answering that. Like like background vocals on. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh, and, so he's lead vocal. Yeah. Horns and, back. Yeah and, of course. And so in this specific arra arrangement with the five horns, it's mostly four horn harmonies when it's in harmony, with the flugel and the flute doubling either in the same octave or above, just to give the softness on top. Okay. And and then the clarinet kind of mixes in the section lower, and then it allows me also with clarinet flute to split those two out usually in octaves or in tenths to do separate lines and then the, the flugels and bone can be warm down low. Yeah. So that so this song it it really there really wasn't much choice if you yeah, really yeah, totally. think about it. But yeah, I mean it, it really is each each song has its its own well, what's the role of the horns and, and I, I like to get the songs in a fairly complete form. Yeah. As most horn rangers do. Yeah. It's it's because once you, everything starts changing underneath, the whole concept of what you wrote can yeah. be messed up. Yeah. And so, um, you know, if, if, it, if a song comes hard like that and you just hear it instantly, okay, this is what it's going to be. But, you know, there's there's so many different, even with five or six horns, there's so many different options. Even the, you know, the two basic ones, like you said, there's one hard hitting and one yeah. soft, but there's also muted brass and how that works with woodwinds. And I decided sure. not to do that with this just because... Um, the muted brass give it a more of a buzzy sound. Yeah. And uh, maybe a little funkier. And this is just more cool. Yeah. And so the flugels are, have a warmth to them that blends really well with the woodwinds. And, yeah. And so, but on the bridge, we did decide we needed a little more power. So we, let's bring in the trumpets, which you may or may not have heard when you listened to this song or paid attention to. Right. And of course, they at that point, they're the lead voice. Yeah. And Dave, Dave is answering. Yeah. So then the brass came in hard with a unison line, yep. I think. Yep. So let me show you the difference there. Here's what the flugels sound like on their own. Well, 
I'll put the trombone in there too, just because. Because I'm right here. <laughs> I am right here. Switch to trumpet. They gotta come out, they gotta come out guns blazing there. And then back to the flugels. So you can hear that warmth in the sound. Here, let's let's play that in context too. So you'll hear them, you'll see it actually. So right here where my mouse is, this is where they switch to the flugel, or this is where they switch to the trumpets. Uh, let me, I'll play that whole pre-chorus section so you can hear the flugels in context. There you go. So flugels are nice, soft, sweet. Yeah, I forgot. That's why we we did that is because the... And Dave originally wanted to... Well, he originally thought, well, I'll just play the sax melody the whole way through. And I thought, yeah, but I'm kind of getting tired of listening to the saxophone <laughs> at that point. And, well, and I, I say that like in the same way where I, in my songs... Normally, yeah. I don't like guitar to be the main thing the whole time. Like, I want... Mix it up. Uh, yeah, mix it, mix it up, just... And whatever. And Dave was totally fine with it. He said, oh, yeah. Let's have somebody else play the melody there. So he's... He's playing the verses. Um, yeah, and it's just it's just a, a little bit of a scene change. It's a change, now, change in the conversation. Yeah. You know, he's he's talking to you the whole time, and now he's... He passes it over and he's answering us. Yes. And, you know, that's, you know, in the <clears throat> horn arranging, it's like, I always have to find out what part of the conversation I am. Yeah. And once there's a lot there, it can get trickier as it goes. But this one, I mean, that's a great suggestion. That's the perfect point yeah. for the trumpets to take over and him to answer. If I remember right, solid back and forth. When I, when we were first talking about this arrangement, you were thinking about approach on things. And I remember, I remember saying something along... In the same way where Dave was like, oh, do this John Mayer voicing sort of thing. I think I said, I like hearing this sort of, like the, you know, that sort of, that sort of uh, arranging. Where one, like, you know, it, one note stays, one moves. I don't remember in the arrangement, did we get any of that sort of? Yeah, at the 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 clarinet and flute do do it on, on that, um, uh, how is it? Uh, Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where is that? That would be the last. That's the last. It, it one, happens other places, but you can find it easy in the easiest in the end. Yeah. I think right there. Was oh, it this actually one here? This him. That one? Is, yeah. Well, there's one where it's just the movement. Check this one, this. Check. That's where it's most obvious. That's it. Let's yeah. pull up the score. Yeah. We got the score. Let's let the people see it. So it's the last bar they played. Yeah, so right in here. Yeah. It's that this descending line in the clarinet. Yeah. All right, let's... Well, let's get that... Um, just so people can see the score with the, we'll play it from the last verse. was insistent that it ends with just Dave. Yeah. He's like, isn't that like kind of like, shouldn't we do a fade out? I was like, no, 
Do it like you would do it at the live. Think you're you're out. You're at the Minnesota Zoo Amphitheater outdoors <laughs> on you know mid July night. It's, it's the encore song because by now it's face, a hit bro. song, <laughs> and the crowd screaming for it. End of the night, the band leaves the stage, and then it's just Dave with the spotlight at the end. Come on, that's some production. It's built into the it's built into the arrangement. Get the audience to snap. Get the audience snapping. Come on, yeah, that's it. That's money. Legendary Corey Wong thing that we do a lot. Oh yeah, the, is the, the bonkers drop. Bonker drop. The bonkers the drop. drop. That was a uh, GTD game time decision. Yo, it we was. did the bonkers drop. In fact, you can prove it's a game time decision because it's not in the score. We, we were playing in the hole on the score. <laughs> you that's me, right. <laughs> you looked at me. We looked at each other. It was like, man. I know, I, at, we got to that spot, Batar gives me that look like, I'm like, you feeling the bunkers drop? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and All another right. thing that you also suggested was that I did, um, was your suggestion, and for me and Kevin, to catch Dave's melody right into the solo. Yeah, go it. Pop, 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 pop. We all, we'll oh, get there. Right, right, yeah, yeah. The bunkers drop is this, for those that don't know. And nobody knows because only we know. Because the bunkers. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. But it's out on four, in on two. Silent on four, and you hit on beat two. Now, there's a Schofield drop. There's, well, we had a handful of other drops that we were doing. There's some where we drop on three, in on two. Somewhere where we hit on four, hit on beat two. But this is the classic bunkers drop. Or drop the one. <laughs> or yeah, you just drop the one. This is just straight up. This works. It works for us. We do it. It's one of our calling cards. You listen to an Emily King album, half the songs, the band is out on the first two bars of the second verse. It's a cool little trick. Pay attention and listen to all of Emily King's hits. They, they do that and it's awesome. She's one of my favorite artists. Um, fun production trick. This is how we, this is the fun <laughs> But it's not like we slam back in on two. Sometimes you slam back in on two. On this one, it's just, it's as if we just highlighted it in Pro Tools and deleted it. You still play the same amount, but it's just coming in, going out. <laughs> as soon as I, I didn't even think about it until you giggled. He was gonna do another <laughs> some kind of monster. Is he gonna I looked at him. Is he gonna do that? I looked at him. I didn't Delete say anything. That. <laughs> he will hunt the show. You know what we need to do? We need to get the stems for. I need the Pro Tool sessions for every Metallica album. They will we not just, like us. We just need to do on the one for one of their tunes. How about on the one on the entire some kind of monster? Uh, we do on the one for the song one. I'll tell you the first thing I'm gonna do in that Pro Tools session though is I'm gonna turn up the bass guitar. <laughs> Yo, they did Newstead Dirty. They did Newstead Dirty. They did Newstead Dirty on that it's album. So dirty that we call everything that you don't have enough bass. We call oh somebody just got Newstead. Yo, you give them the Newstead? Oh, no. That's like listen to that album. Okay. The bass is like gone. Wow. It is almost inaudible. It's a shame because Jason Newstead is incredible. He probably is. I hope he watches this episode. <laughs> Jason Newstead is not watching an <laughs> on the one episode of Cory Wong and Dave Koss. <laughs> hey, <who knows? laughs> oh, no. If there's any episode of on the one that Jason Newstead is not going to watch, <laughs> it's this, this one. This is the one. <laughs> Although, Koss is from, well, Koss now lives in the Bay Area. I'll say that. And Metallica is a Bay Area. Yeah. Yo, speaking of Bay Area, I just looked up and noticed your new glasses. Thanks to Kaz. Thanks so, to Kaz. Kaz has connections in every, every realm of everything. And this Blake is a total Will. sidebar. This has nothing to do with anything, but it's just an insight to us. Patara and I were following this glasses company, uh, clearly because I wear glasses so much. 
I used to, but I got PRK. This dude, Blake Kuahara, makes dope glasses. And then all of a sudden, Kaz posts something, and, like, and he's oh. with Blake. And we're like, dude, you know Blake? <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted his glasses like the last He's like, oh, years. yeah, yeah, let me, get, let me get you connected with Blake. You, you need to ha- link up and get some glasses. Blake's I think because Quest loves wearing his glasses. There's yep. a bunch of A bunch of people. Hey, speaking of new glasses, though, hold on, hold on. Not that we need this tangent to go any longer. Uh-oh. I was going through security the other day. <laughs> I'm going through security the other day. Hey, I got a clear membership. That's fine. I got a clear membership because I fly a lot, okay? I pay the money to be in a shorter line. I don't know what they're thinking, but clear sometimes, they sometimes will just give you little gifts. Like, oh, hey, here's a mask, a clear mask. Here's a clear branded mask. Here's, um, I don't know, this is little travel kits. The lady handed me these clear glasses. No. Are these dope? No. I'm, I'm thinking Kaz would not hook you up with those glasses. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I See, I need to hit up Blake. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I need some cooies. Cooies, man. Blake, these, these clear joints are not cutting it. But I just thought it was so bold and interesting of them. Yeah. I think they're blue light glasses is what it is. Yeah. But, but that's clearly a call for help to Blake is what I'm seeing. At this me moment. too. Yeah, I need, I need some yeah. glasses. Not cool, Sonny? No. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We have we've gone down the road of glasses and Newstead. Back to the drum fills. This is how we get into the into that into that solo. Just catching catching some of these hits to make a little more of an event to then have somewhere to build up and then drop down to. So this this sort of thing. Now, I want to I want to play this Dave solo soloed because I want I want cats to know cause is legit. And every take, every, every single take. take, every take, he had the it factor on every single take. I I was I was blown away. Yeah. I mean I knew cause had it has it. But until you work with somebody, yeah, ex- you, you exactly. Don't, you don't know yeah. the, exactly. The level. You yeah. don't know. You don't know how consistent they are. You don't know. Yeah, at how what much, level? If, if what's manufactured, what's yes, what you know just happens all the time. It's but yeah. Dave. Every here it is. He brought the here it is. Solo, solo cause. Yes. So much subtlety in that his playing. So content. much subtlety. It's just not hammering every every note. Yes. And the phrasing, the bending. Time. Where everything. his time is fluctuating, but it always settles. It's I mean you can hear the bleed of the drums. That's like it's nothing is Yeah. It's just yeah. that's the take. That's there's no comps, nothing. He just crushed it. That's cause. Alright. Look, if you're not familiar with the album. 
Go check it out wherever you listen to music. And as I mentioned at the beginning, so Dave and I put this album out as a collaborative album. Very fun. But some people, and I don't know if you know this either, but like, so there's a lot of ways that you can make an album with somebody and deal with the business side of things. So Dave and I split all the costs 50-50, and we are going to split all the profits 50-50. And what I do, I use DistroKid. And okay, so this is my DistroKid homepage. You can see all of my releases. So this is the album page, and you can see all of our stuff, and you can see this is the team, right? So you can edit the team of your album, and I can say, 50% of this song goes to me, 50% goes to Dave's email, which is blurred out. And then I do that for every song. And when I do that, Distro Kid- a couple of emails, just let's just add a couple of more emails. Well, that's that's where things could go. I mean, honestly, uh, I, I would entertain the option. I think at some point it's like, okay, I could pay for my albums to get done like I do now, I pay everybody like, right. work for hire, right? Or how about you don't get paid up front, but you get a certain percentage. And just like, all right, let's project how much we think is fair or like what, where is the break even? I, there's probably some sort of for, cal, formula we could calculate and then people could make a percentage. It would cost less to the artist to make, but then there would be more to gain potentially for everybody involved mm -hmm. if people wanted to be on percentages. But that being said, most people just like to be paid up front for their yeah. work, which I, I'm totally fine with either, I think. But with DistroKit, it makes it really easy because like my Metropole Orchest album, I see a percentage, Metropole Orchestra sees a percentage, the conductor gets a small percentage and Cody Fry gets a percentage on the songs that he was at. Well, actually I give Cody a small percentage of the entire album, but with some collaborations, it just kind of makes it really easy because then our accounting, like I don't have to do all that accounting and then pay Dave yeah. half, or he doesn't have to get the money and then pay me half. It just kind of goes and we never have to deal with making sure that we're sending stuff back and forth. So. That's the thing that I like the most about DistroKid because I do a lot of collaborations and I think it's awesome. So see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>